Okay, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the installation of Logic and setting it up for the very first time. We're gonna start by going into the App Store because this is where we do the installation and begin that whole process. We can type in Logic and you can see I've already purchased it, which is why there's a cloud right here. But if you hadn't, you can actually say get, buy. We're gonna download this now, and it just does the application at first. A lot of the auxiliary content comes after we download the primary application. So what we're gonna do is a series of pauses in this video so that you don't have to sit watching it download. So we're gonna pause right now, once this is done, we will start back up. Okay, and we're back. I would say that took about three to five minutes to download, maybe a little bit quicker, but you know, when you're staring at it, looking, uh, it feels like a long time, but it's actually pretty quick. That's just the first part of it though. So I'm gonna click on open, and now we have what are called the essentials uh, downloading. And this is, you can see just over a gigabyte in terms of its download size, it expands to be bigger, but it takes about one to two minutes on my connection. Uh, they do give you this right here, this little option for doing some research about this. If you want more information, you can click on this if you're brand new to Logic, or if you've used it before, then you can click on that. So if you're coming brand new to this, here's the user guide and it's getting started with Logic Pro. And this is exactly what we're gonna be replacing with this video tutorial. But it's a great resource if, if you want it in written format as well to kind of read through and see some of the things that Apple suggests. Okay, so now we're getting pretty close to this. And once this is done, we could actually, we could actually say download later and open it now. But um, we're gonna get this essential pack down first. That gives us a few instruments to play around with. We don't have to necessarily wait uh, to be able to start messing with it. But the whole thing really happens next where we have an enormous library to download. And so that's what we wanna start doing in the background after this is done. So now it's going to install it, it's downloaded it, now it's gonna install. It takes, again, almost just as much time to install as it did to download. One of the reasons for this is that there are just so many files in an instrument library. So you have your main overall instrument, you have all these little audio files, which are all the different notes. And so a lot of this content takes a long time to unpack. So it's in some sort of a, uh, packed file that it gets downloaded. So it has to be unpacked, has to be put in place. Uh, I'm assuming they do some sort of verification on it, but um, all of this then is nearly done. And once it is, we will open up Logic for the very first time and you'll be able to see what it looks like. The next thing we see is this dialog that says more sounds available. We're gonna download later for a moment. We're going to skip what's new in Logic Pro 10 and so now this dialog pops up saying, choose a project, we want an empty one or a live loops. We have some recent options. I have been using Logic on this computer, so I have some, but if you're doing this for the first time, you wouldn't. We have some starter template grids, some tutorial options, demo project, and then some templates. Down below, we have some more advanced options. So we're going to do a new project, an empty one, and down here, we're gonna leave this pretty much as the default. Musical grid, yes, because almost everything I do is in a musical grid, like a song with a tempo. Here's the tempo, we, we can tap it out if we want. We can set the key signature, major, minor, and the time signature. For most things, you could leave this all default right now, unless you have a very specific song in mind, but we can change this later too. But now comes an important part, where we get to choose our input device, which is my Steinberg UR22 Mark II, two input, two output with MIDI audio interface. Uh, really simple device. It's great for a small setup like I'm using. Um, 
Also, you want to set the output to wherever you plug your headphones in. In this case, I'm using Telestream Audio Capture. That's just the screen capture that I'm doing, so you can see what I'm doing. And then sample rate. I almost always these days work at 48 kilohertz. We can get into more depth later of why that is. But the simple answer is because I do a lot of online work with Zoom. And I do a lot of classes online in Zoom. And Zoom insists on working best with 48 kilohertz sampling rate. Um, the frame rate, I find, won't matter unless you're doing anything with video, like a score or sound design for a movie, and then surround format, don't worry about that right now either. So the main thing is setting your input and output device is really handy at the beginning of this project creation. But let's just create an empty one. And we'll make our first musical instrument. That was the left choice there. Okay, now that we have this open, there's a few things we wanna look at to continue to get you set up properly. The first thing is, if you're working on a laptop and you don't have very much room on your hard drive, then installing the complete set of sounds may not be the best option. It's gonna be between 70 and 80 gigabytes all said and done. And if you don't have that or don't need to do that, then don't do it yet. You can always go into About Your Mac, look at storage, you can see here, most of my one terabyte internal drive is pretty full. I have a lot of video projects happening. So this will tell you how much room you have. And if you have enough room left, then by all means, download it. Now down here, inside of our library, the library is the first of these buttons along the top left. This shows us all of our sounds that are included with Logic. These are the instruments. And then over here on the right, we have our Apple Loops, which also come as a part of the default kit. So I'm going to show those for a second too. But the little arrow pointing down here means that something isn't downloaded yet, but that there's a choice for downloading it. So you can see all of these right here with the quick sampler, those are downloaded. If I want to come in and use, for instance, a vibraphone. So say I don't do the full download of everything. But at some point, there's something I want to use, like a polka accordion. You'll see it's not here right now. It's grayed out. I'm going to click on that little arrow just to download this one sound. Um, so I can actually come up here. Well, right now it's indexing the Apple Loops. But I can just click on that. Once this is finished with the Apple Loops, it will download this single instrument that I can then use on all my projects. So this is a great way, for instance, if you have a limited amount of space, to be able to still have access to all the sounds without necessarily having to get them all at once and take up all your hard drive. See if we can get that to work. You'll see the same arrows over here in our Apple Loops. So a few of them are downloaded, but many of them aren't. And we can get more of them by clicking on the little arrows there to download them. So that is the way at the very beginning to manage more of what you're doing in terms of your space, your hard drive, and all of that happening right off the bat. Now, a few more things we want to kind of get set up while we're waiting for those instruments to pop in. You'll notice for some of you that this looks different than maybe what you were expecting with the little wood edges there. This looks a lot more like GarageBand right now. And I'm just going to explain how and where to change that so that you can actually make it look like the full version of Logic. Inside our preferences, we have advanced tools. And I'm not saying we need to actually turn on all of the advanced tools. There's a, actually some benefit not to but this is where you would do it. So if you turn on advanced tools or show them, the wood automatically disappears, even though they're not on. But then we have things like advanced additional options here, enables destructive audio editing, surround sound, some more advanced MIDI controllers with the environment, control surfaces, 
allows you to create new ones and custom ones. We have the score editor. We have advanced editing. We can enable them all or we can disable them all and actually hide advanced tools if we want. And that's where we're going to start for now. We don't necessarily need all of that stuff if you're just brand new to Logic. Sometimes it makes sense not to have them all visible right at the beginning. And then we can add them as we need them. The last two things I want to talk about. One of them is inside your preferences. And this is an important place to make a, dis a distinguishing fact here. We have Logic Preferences, which deals with Logic as a global program. That means that anything we change there is going to change it for all of your different projects. But we also have this thing called Project Settings, and these are different. These go project to project. They're saved with the project, and if we make changes in here and you open up a new project, they won't stick with it. So they just... Uh, they just go with individual projects. We're going to look at the preferences though. And in this mode without the advanced options all enabled, it's definitely a little bit more narrow, which is good I think for this situation. But we have a few things we can change right off the bat. For instance, startup action. I don't like to open up the most recent project. I like to either ask or do nothing. Those are my two favorite personally, but you can pick which one you want. So I'm going to put on ask for now. And then we also have the auto backup option. You can have this save tons of alternate versions of your project. The, for instance, the last 50 alternate versions, last 10 alternate versions. This is a great way to get back to things if you make a mistake or you know, do something that you didn't mean to do and you want to go back and try to get back to it. So this is a great way to do that. And then inside the audio, if you didn't set up your audio interface when you first created this, this is where you'll do it. And I just want to touch on one option here that's really important right off the bat. And that is the buffer size. This is a little buffer that the software uses to accomplish all of its tasks. Uh, it may seem like everything's instantaneous or real time, but even when you're playing on a MIDI keyboard, it takes just a, a fraction of a second to accomplish all those things. When we're doing this, we want this to be set low when we're recording. And then as our projects expand and we need to add more and more effects and tools and all that, we can raise this up. And so giving it more of a buffer allows it to actually accomplish more with your processor and the memory and everything you have, but it adds more of a delay when you, for instance, push a key on your MIDI controller. And so we start with it at least 128. As the project grows, you may start running out of processing power and need to raise this up, but then it will cause a delay. But So start here when you're originally recording and then move it up as you're actually increasing what your project needs to do. Okay, so those are the main things that we wanted to look at with all of this. Let's recap just for a minute. We looked at installing all of your sounds, the initial required kit. We also now can look really briefly at the sound manager, and this shows all of the rest of them. And so you can see how many of these are not installed or incomplete and which ones are the essential sounds are. I'm actually going to now select everything else, including one that doesn't get automatically selected, which is the legacy and compatibility. I like some of the legacy sounds. These are all the old jam packs that used to come with GarageBand where you could buy them separately. There's some interesting things in there. They're not all great. And you'll see that this requires quite a bit of space. I'm going to do this in the background now. And you can click on the little blue bar below the transport here and see the progress of that. It says about 23 minutes. I bet you it'll be a little bit longer than that. I'm going to get that working in the background. That way now I can get 
all of the sounds when I come down into my station next time and just have all of that ready to go. I've got enough room on my internal drive. Once I have that down, and this is the interesting thing, if you are doing that but you don't want to keep them on your main drive, you can do what's called the relocate function. Once it's all done, you can relocate it to an external hard drive, and then you have to plug in that drive anytime you want to use that stuff. So that is uh, another thing to think about when you're doing this. You, you have to have enough room on your main drive to do the initial download. And then after that, you can relocate it. So it's a, a great way to work. So that's pretty much it for the initial setup and a, a few key concepts to think about when you're doing this. The next video is going to talk about making our first MIDI recording, audio recording, and looking at some of the basic editing tools. Okay, thanks, and I hope you're all having a great week.